With us now is the director of It Takes Two, Josef Fares. Josef, first of all, thank you for taking your time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Um, I also want to thank you for focusing on creating great co-op experiences because I feel like co-op has been sidetracked throughout the years and have mostly been in addition to single-player games or like, you know, an online co-op shooter, which can be fun, don't get me wrong, but a true cooperative game is more rare. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I would like to start this interview by asking you what is your first recollection or memory of playing a great co-op game? Uh, well, the thing is like this. I think what... Uh, you know, the first, when it started with Brothers, it's, it's always from the fact what games I want to play. I would even go so far and say that what Hazelight are doing is actually totally unique and haven't been done before. Hmm. You've had your co-op games before, and you do have your co-op game, but nothing is actually written and designed from the beginning as co-op, both mechanically and story and everything. I mm -hmm. think that's super unique for us. Mm -hmm. However, my personal memories of split screens games, I mean, that, that they're not so narrative, but I remember one of the, the, the first experience was obviously Mario Go Kart, Super Mario Kart, you know, when you had the split screen. Yeah. Uh, but as a co-op, like the closest thing to co-op story, I would mm -hmm. say was uh, one of them was Resident Evil 5, you know, was yeah. quite good co-op. But that's still a drop in, drop out. You can still play it alone or play it with the AI. So there's yeah. a difference between that and doing it. So, so I think like what we do is really push it that you really are in need from your other player, which, which is like uh, something truly unique to us, I would say. But but I have many cool, I mean, Portal 2, the co-op, I think yeah. is beautiful. It's not a yeah. story co-op, but it's still a beautiful co-op, uh, very puzzly game, but I love it. I mean, that's a beautiful uh, campaign. It really is. Um, and now you've released It Takes Two. How did the idea for the, this game and wonderful story come about? Actually, we, we felt that we wanted to take the co-op genre even further. We've learned so much from our way out. We want to push that forward. And... Uh, and slowly the, 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 the vision, the idea slowly came together. Uh, it wasn't any specific thing. That's the idea it came out. We just wanted to push the co-opness even more and to get closer to what I talk about a lot, like to combine the narrative and the mechanic and stuff like that. So, so it was that starting point. Uh, but obviously we did it in a way that, uh, you know, we liked at Hazelet to do stuff that haven't really been done. Both the rom-com tone hasn't really been done and all the variety in gameplay, how we, you know, we like to have challenges, but obviously yeah. it takes a lot of energy. As you can see now, I'm, I'm quite tired, <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. But I, I think this is really interesting. So what came first was actually a lot of the game mechanics and what you wanted to do to try and push the medium forward. And then the story evolved from there. It's a combination, a combination, actually. So both mm -hmm. started ish at the same time. But then when the story was decided and designed, so here's what I say a lot. You see sometimes narrative games where you almost see the writers and the designers almost like they're doing two different games. Here, we really try to collaborate. Of course, we try up a lot of mechanics and test and prototype, but eventually we meet up. So it makes sense story-wise as well. We are, we are extremely hard on this to, to, to combine those two. Uh, sometimes it could be, some games could be that the story is there first, but mostly it's actually that you have a mechanic mechanic that mechanically is interesting, makes sense and feels <laughs> fresh, you know what I mean? Dr. Hakim, you have to help me now. They have to stay together. Look, it says here, love is work, see? You have to work on it. You can't just give up. Mom, Dad, I wish you could be friends again. So it seems to me with this story um, about a couple wanting to leave each other and then their daughter trying to get them back together, it, it seems like a, a very personal story. And looking back on your previous games and also movies, it seems like you draw a lot of inspiration from your own family. Uh, you've also worked with your father and your brother on both games and movies. Is family a place where you draw a lot of inspiration? For sure. I mean, uh, 
I think it's impossible not to be inspired from everything around you, actually. Mm. And I mean, uh, sometimes it's very clear examples. Like in brothers, I have a brother and some things in our relationship was inspired to the game. But yeah. sometimes it could be inspiration that I don't know, but obviously stuff that uh, that inspired me. And this game, there's no particular one. I mean, I am playing, I mean, I am mocapping the crazy, cheesy love book, Hakim. So obviously yeah. that's, that's me and my... But there's no specific moment that I've been through a divorce or something like that, actually. Nothing. I mean, I'm not even married, so there's nothing to divorce. <laughs> I mean, I, I live with my girlfriend, obviously, and, and, and my daughter, but uh, I haven't been through a divorce yet. Hopefully, I don't have hopefully to. Never, hopefully never. Yeah. Who knows? 50% of people divorce now, so it's probably going to happen. <laughs> Be part of the cool 50% who don't get divorced. Yeah, exactly. Or if you're having problems, then just play this game. Good one. Yeah. Yes, play this game, you feel the love again. <laughs> exactly. So you mentioned that you wanted to push um, the medium and, and playing this game. I do get the feeling that you've had a development process where every idea was welcome and that you've tried to put as many ideas and aspects into the game as it was possible. Yeah. Did it evolve naturally or did the story dictate what you wanted to do as well? I think it's a combination. Again, this is, this is so important because we're a narrative studio. For instance, the game is not too challenging. It's challenging, but not too challenging. Uh, every, every mechanic that we felt, oh, this, this really fits the scene. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't say fun the first thing I do because I, sometimes... You can hear the sign that says, is this fun? Or people say, is the game fun? I definitely don't believe that's not what the game should be about only. It's part of it. And some scenes are part of it. But I would still argue that many of the best scenes I played in games is not about fun. So what we're really trying to do is find a mechanic. Sometimes we find a mechanic that's like, oh, this is a super cool mechanic that's connected to the story. But mm -hmm. the best thing is that when you have a combination that sometimes it can be a, meta, a, meta, a metaphor. For instance, in this game, we have that they're working on their attraction and they have magnets. So then the, you're playing like a, like a, you're playing in a mechanic that feels kind of fresh as a, as a piece of magnet, but still is connected to the story somehow mm -hmm. that is a metaphor for your attraction. You know what I mean? So yeah. those types of stuff are, are, I think, again, like you, you don't want to, I mean, have a, a narrative written experience, then you're just going around and shooting and you know what I mean? So, yeah. and I think you can do that, but I think uh, that the gameplay is way more, uh, can be way more used for the narrative than some designers believe, I think. Mm. That's what we want to push for. Yeah. And I also believe that today in this day and age, uh, some of the best storytelling is found in games because it's such a unique medium where you can have an impact with your stories that you can't have in movies or in TV series. For sure, for sure. But uh, however, I don't agree with you that the best storytelling in games yet, we can't, we can create them in the future, but we're not there yet, but we're slowly getting closer and closer. Uh, but I don't, I don't think uh, we are at the level of storytelling over TV series and movies are yet, but we are getting there. So it's getting, it's, I'm very optimistic. And I think that uh, uh, I see a very bright future. Actually, at some point in the future, I think that uh, at the end of the day, people want to be moved by a story. And I think mm -hmm. uh, in an interactive experience, I think the story can become even more stronger, more emotional and, 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 and very different from, from a passive experience as a movie. But uh, it's definitely going the right direction in, in, in games, for sure. I mean, we're seeing it with the late, I mean, Last of Us Part Two, for instance, is becoming way, yeah. way more better stories and it's, and it's coming better and better. But we're not really at the level of a movie and, and TV yet, I think. Okay, so, so what do you believe will have to be the next couple of steps to actually get there? I, th I think uh, naturally, first of all, it's going to be time that we need. I mean, you have extreme amount of talented writers in the movie industry we don't have the same in the gaming industry if you're a you know we have talented writers but you don't have the same the same uh, amount you know what i mean but hopefully like when the writers in the gaming industry also learn how to write for video games because i mean in, in movies and tv you kind of I mean, ish, I'm, I'm generalizing, of course, but you have a kind of a, a concept, an idea how to write for a movie, how to write it. In games, you don't know, like, what's your mechanic? What are you going to do? How to tell a story? I mean, uh, 
a game is a very interactive medium. It's very hard to control. That's one of the hardest things to control the story in a game because it is interactive. In a movie, it's very passive. You can pace the audience. You can do whatever you want. Here, you can have a, I mean, depending on what kind of game you do, you can have a, I don't know, an hour game, for instance. We have like a lot of mini games around, but people could be sitting there and playing an hour. I mean, mm -hmm. imagine just pausing a movie for an hour and doing something <laughs> else. That, you know what I mean? So the pacing yeah. is very important in the movie. So, the, the, so we have many, many challenges, even if we write scripts or dialogue that are close to what a great TV and movie is. I think the implementation and how we combine them are, we aren't there yet. And that's yeah. what I want us at Hazelight to keep pushing. Like mm -hmm. How do we combine those? And we want to be part of the future. Man, what happened to my greenhouse? It's terrible. That is what happens when you abandon your passion. It gets you infected. You don't love me now. Woo. You will never love me again. I can't still... Wait a minute. You used my chessboard to build your toy castle. Yeah, so what? You never use it anymore? Because I don't have the time. But now, you can control time. binoculars oh no what's the matter with us all i know is that rose sat down there with her dolls and then you two came alive so what are the challenges in in creating co-op game a co-op game like yours because it demands that two players actually play it is it almost like creating two games in one one for each player because they have different game modes and basically different stories each character yes yes for sure i mean everything is hard in this game it's been like the romantic comedy aspect of it i mean that hasn't really been done and it's hard even for a movie to do it like find that tone how to tell a story how to pace the story it's easier also to make a story title for single play then you're more for in a co-op people talk to each other they're not they're not as focused on cutscenes. you know they're there you don't hear the barks as often so you there's so many stuff like you need to do and the also like create mechanics that fits well mechanically and that fits well to the story uh because you can't drop in drop out i mean most of the levels in this game you're playing actually a unique mechanic for your character hmm. i mean so depending on what character you're playing you're going to get kind of a different experience you know hmm. and those stuff are very hard like to find like okay this level is about this what, we, what kind of mechanic can we create that makes sense for that, you know, thing? For instance, like traction or yeah. their relationship to time as a couple. They have kind of that crazy book puts them in a kind of a, like a therapy session. So mm -hmm. they're like everything. And then, uh, of course, it's challenging to get all those mechanics and then polish them because you don't want to, I mean, it's easier when you have a few mechanics and you can polish them. But you have when you have so many variation, and I think we really nailed it. And to polish mm -hmm. all those to a level where like, doof, it feels crisp and nice. But trust me, when you get the control in the hand, you will see that we have succeeded. I mean, this is a co-op masterpiece. I mean, I yeah. can't say, I can't say it's like, there's nothing like it. I mean, it feels really nice and tight and fluid and like, yeah. I mean, that's what we're seeing now when people are testing, like, wow, it feels so good. So. I'm really happy what we have done, what we have put together. Mm. And what do you hope that the players who play the game sit with after they finish the game? That they feel that they have played something, that they feel a warmth in their heart and that they have played something. I know they will be, have played something that they haven't played before. And, and, a, and a huge adventure, like a, you know, an adventure they've never experienced before, pretty much. And. We touched upon it a bit before, but would you say that this would be a good game to play if you're having issues or squabbles in your relationship? Or, for example, if you need to reconnect with a friend after being isolated during COVID or something? Actually, yes, I think so. Because not only because of the story, but also it's going to demand that you really communicate with your partner. And it definitely will say a lot of how you are as couples. So I would mm -hmm. say, yes, it it. Uh, if you manage to go through this game without arguing, then it will definitely help you. And also that book is cheesy and he's crazy, but I think he has some very good points. So yeah. one should listen to him, even if he's a cheesy love book. <laughs> listen to the cheesy love book is my new motto. Um, thank you so much, Joseph, for taking your time to talk to me about It Takes Two. It was a pleasure. Cool, man. Thank you. Thank you. Take thank care. You. Thank you. You too.
Uh-huh, yeah, you feel that? Mm -hmm. Kisses, you like? What is wrong with that guy?